today's tough question, Nick Saban, is he just simply whining and what is he whining about? Now, we did talk about the permanent opponents in which it's Alabama, Auburn, and Tennessee. I will go ahead and tell you on that one. He is definitely – I'm sorry, LSU. So it would be Tennessee, Auburn, and LSU. Yes. I will go ahead and tell you he is definitely, definitely whining on that one. There are no other choices, and that's the bottom line. And he can gripe about it because Tennessee's good now, but if Tennessee was bad, he would be fine with it. If Tennessee was the Tennessee of four years ago, he'd be perfectly fine with it. That's whining. But Caleb has other issues with Nick Saban, the dean of the SEC and the most successful coach perhaps in the history of college football, considering the competition. Caleb, why is Nick Saban whining? So a few days ago, and this is funny because this ties in because Ross Dellinger was the one who leaked the reported potential permanent opponents for the teams. Uh, Saban spoke with Ross Dellinger to discuss his thoughts on some changes. Well, I told you no question that they had talked. Remember? Yes, you did. There was was zero question that they had had spoken. Um, So... Saban is complaining about how quickly team. This is a direct shot at Tennessee. By the way, the two things I'm about to tell you guys are directed specifically at Tennessee, because the first one he complained about was how quickly teams are allowed to snap the ball after his after it's spotted, and he talks about how the way it used is quoted something like the way it used to be, officials would hold would would stand over the ball while you got set and you couldn't snap it immediately after they moved off. And he asked if it's good for the sport that teams can snap the ball within seven seconds of the play clock. Well, I'm sorry. I thought a play clock meant you could snap it whenever the heck you wanted to snap it once you're set. And he played that card years ago. Here's where I'm backing you 100%. And I'm, I am a Nick Saban fan. I think he's done a lot for the sport. I think the sport's better when Alabama's good, okay? So I will tell you that I like Nick Saban. A lot of you out there are like, what the H, Dave? You're crazy. But I like Nick Saban being in the sport. I'll be a little bit sad when he retires. But that's whining. Period. End of the discussion. That's whining. Because he said the same thing 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And what did he do? Well, about 12 years ago. What did he do? He went out and hired Lane Kiffin to install just that type of offense. It's exactly what he did. A high up-tempo offense. And now he's getting away from it because he sees Kirby Smart winning in the old physical route. That is whining. So what else with today's tough question? Well, then, as part of it, this is blatantly whining to me, too. Nick Saban went on Stephen A. Smith's No Mercy podcast, and oh they did an interview. That was his first mistake. <laughs> um, and Saban said that there should be a salary cap for college football with NIL. And he said that the, that college football should adopt the NIL model, clearly pretending he was for some competitive fairness. Well, Nick Saban had no problem with the competitive disadvantage when you talk about Alabama being in a situation where they can easily get the number one recruiting class every year. So if Nick Saban wants the NFL model, fine, let's do a salary cap, but also Alabama gets the last pick on recruits after they win a national championship. Of course he's not going to be for that. Okay, this is where you're going to get mad at me. He's not whining, and there needs to be one. There does not. There does not. Open up the floodgates. Let them get paid. There has to be one. This is getting a little bit ridiculous. If, if, uh, I'm just telling you, if Nico, oh, sorry. If Nico, I got something special for you. I've been waiting to do this. If Nico, (laughs) that's him saying his own name to correct us. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which we, one of us have needed because one of us needed that. Is that you? I didn't know who it was. We've been attacked on the message board. But I, I will I will go ahead and tell you, if a guy's getting $8 million and he hadn't played it down in college football, I don't care if it's Arch Manning or Nico. Then he does indeed. There needs to be a salary cap. No! They're now, well, let me, let me make your argument before you even make it yourself. What's going to happen is... Is people are going to go over, let's say it's 20 million. They're going to go over the salary cap, and then the NCAA is going to blow the enforcement of it. So we're going to be right back in the same boat that we were with people getting money in Chick fil A bags or McDonald's bags. So, and not talking about Tennessee, but college football as a whole. So, Caleb, there needs to be some sort of spending to keep it equal because even. 
Let me argue why. Let me argue why. <laughs> because you know I'm a mega conference guy. I'm 32 to 38 teams. Let's do this. Let's separate. Let's go. Let's. I'm down. But here's the thing that you have to remember. Some of those teams that are going to be in the bottom end of that 38 are not going to be able to compete either. How many teams do you think can pay whatever a kid asks? What, a dozen? Yeah, that's irrelevant. That was the point Nick Saban was trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is, with or without NIL, there are programs that have inherent advantages that will be able to compete and others won't. You think NIL is going to keep Vanderbilt from being able to compete in football? No, they're just going to be garbage with or without NIL money. Like, NIL didn't change anything with them, okay? My point is, if you're worried about some sort of competitive equity the way the NFL has, if you're worried about that in college football, um, well, then you need to limit, like, the number of five stars a school can recruit. That That's the only oh. way to do it. That, I mean, hey, look, Georgia and LSU have built it. We've talked about this a thousand times, Dave. Georgia, LSU, and Ohio State are the three easiest schools to recruit in. They already have an unfair competitive advantage without NIL money because they're in states – that are just loaded with talent, and you can fall asleep and get a top five class. Alabama's on that second tier, but right there, where because they can go into Georgia, North Florida, wherever. So there's already a competitive disadvantage because I don't care what salary cap you put in. I don't care if you get rid of NIL. Vanderbilt and Georgia will never be on the same level, no matter what you do. So you might as well let the star well, athletes get paid. Well, for the record, Vanderbilt's not in my 32 to 38. But they're, okay. they're, they're there. They're in the SEC, and this, they're not getting kicked out. Not if you go if you go mega conference, you you could make the split. I know you can't kick them out of the SEC, but if you go mega conference, you could. Uh, Mr. Jones, I think, is the first time he's been posted. Uh, posted brings up a good point. First, Smoky Mountain Red said, I think it's too late for a cap. You're probably right. A cap might kill the NCAA, which isn't a bad thing. Actually, I think it would strengthen it. And they just added like 40 enforcement people. Um, but I, I think uh, Mr. Jones here brings up a great point. Eight million is worth it because of the r- recruits his name attracts. Whose name? that's right you also left out one big thing too okay well let let, let me let me quickly address mr jones's point because you and mr jones which i think it was a song but uh your name your image your likeness your money yes that is beyond ncaa or college football roles that's the laws that govern our country and i will retract my earlier argument against you caleb i'm not the guy that digs his heels in the stand it's the sand like stephen a smith that you love i'm the guy who will admit when i was wrong and i will say i get the philosophical point but saving in this case it's not whining because alabama could throw out as much money as anybody he's just wrong he is whining. He's mad because Alabama can't throw out as much money as anybody. We tracked this with Spire, with uh, NIL money last year. All three was talking about the largest initiatives. This is why he whined about Texas A&M last year. Tennessee, Texas A&M, Texas, and Miami all have larger initiatives than Alabama. This is why he's going specifically at Tennessee on this. On everything he's doing, he's going at Tennessee. And is he going against Tennessee? Now, that's a heck of a question. I will tell you that, yes, I think he is probably going against Tennessee because they've got their stuff together. But surely Alabama's going to get their stuff together. But maybe not. I thought Florida had their stuff together uh, with the Jalen Rashada situation. And he showed up and he didn't have the cash he was promised. The check bounced. Yes. And that's where you could you could point out that my argument on the NIL initiatives may be BS because Florida was technically in that top five. But as we found out, they threw that initiative together in a month um, using a former baseball player to try to do it. And it, it, it was embarrassing. But Nick Saban, I think, with the quote last week against Alabama, against Auburn, LSU and Tennessee, is his home opponents. The complaint about the tempo and the complaint about NIL. He has been targeting, and he's very concerned about Tennessee. I think that I think that is a clear as most clear as day thing you could say. Now, as for people like Nito Iamaleva, and this is the biggest argument I make, by the way, for players getting all this money. Nico Iamaleva, oh, he got eight million dollars, and he hasn't played a snap of football and hasn't proven himself. Okay, 
Jimbo Fisher is getting on, sitting on a $12 million contract right now, and he hasn't done anything with that money for Texas A&M. He hasn't proven anything yet. So if coaches can get overpaid like this, this was always the argument people made back in the day, which is if coaches can get these gigantic salaries, it's fair to say players can. And for Nick Saban, he also said something like, we're losing what college football is about. Okay, Nick, well, why don't you like coach for less than a million dollars like coaches used to then if we're losing what college football was about? Because there was a time where coaches made in the hundreds of thousands. Am I right, Dave? Oh, I can remember coaches couldn't even get two-year contracts at like $125,000 a year.